I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by skin cancer expert and dermatologist, Dr. Derek Phillips. Thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate you being here. And we've had an incredible response to this story. Uh, do you know how to spot the signs of skin cancer? Dr. Derek's here to answer your questions. Um, 020-7862-2222. Can you start by telling us, Doctor, what is a melanoma? So melanoma is um, the third most common type of skin cancer that we see in the UK. And it's a type of cancer that arises from the pigment producing cells in the skin. It can manifest as new moles or it can develop in existing moles. And as dermatologists, it's the type of skin cancer we're most concerned about because it has the potential to spread to other areas. And it's also potentially life limiting. So 2,300 people a year lose their life to melanoma. Gosh. So it's really something to, take, to pay attention to. So what should we be looking for if we're trying to be vigilant and trying to you know, be alert to what might be happening? So melanomas, as I said, um, they, they often arise from moles. So um, if you have any pigmented marks in your skin, then it's important to have a sense of what they look like and to monitor them. And a very sort of useful tool that one can use is something called the ABCDE approach. Um, so A is for asymmetry. So um, harmless moles tend to be symmetrical, whereas melanoma is irregular and, and asymmetric. So if you draw a line for it, one half should look like the other. B is for um, irregular borders. So melanoma will have an irregular or indistinct border. C is for colours, so multiple colours, so whereas harmless moles tend to have one colour with melanoma, it can be lots of different shades of brown, black, red, even pale areas. Um, D is for diameter, so larger moles need to be monitored. And the most important one is E, which is evolution. So a mole that's changing in size, shape and colour is really something that you should pay attention to and see your doctor about. All right. Well, Mike Parry likes good value for money when he comes on <laughs> yes, the show. Indeed. He likes a coffee, he likes yeah. a biscuit. Right. And now he really would like to show you <laughs> a particular mole that I think he's... Are you actually worried about? Are you actively worried about this? I'd like a diagnosis, please. Yeah. Uh, for those of a delicate nature, turn away that's now. That's me. I, I might <laughs> faint. Uh, so if anybody just forgive uh, me for not watching, my, I don't I've got the chest, it. Doc. I've, oh. I've, got a mole. I've had it for years. I, I never had it checked out. So if I can have your professional opinion, I'll sleep easier tonight, hopefully. Okay, okay so just a bit of context. Has that mole changed at all? I didn't even notice it until a couple of years ago, to be honest. I don't know whether it emerged or whether my other skin got lighter. I don't know. Okay, and it doesn't cause any symptoms? It's not bleeding or anything nope. like that? No, no. Nope. Okay. And I've never tried to squeeze it or anything like Ugh, that. Stop <laughs> it! Don't yeah. say that! Um, so I'm going to use Ugh. my device, which is called a dermatoscope, which right. is a device that dermatologists use just to have a closer look. Okay. So I'm going to shine the light on it, and I can see that it's sort of all one colour. Mm -hmm. It's a uniform sort of um, bluish-black colour, and it's mm -hmm. relatively symmetrical. So I'm just going to lean in. Is that okay, is that okay Mike? Yes, yes, yes. Oh. And have a look. So I can see that it is a violaceous to sort of... Um, dark blue colour and it's made oh, up of little oh, little wow. grape-like structures mm. um, and it looks like something a called... a picture of it there? Yeah! Oh, that, amazing. that is it, yeah. So oh, it, wow. it yeah. looks like something called a... Well, it is a hemangioma, so it's not a mole. Mm. It's a um, it's a blood vessel that's enlarged and they're completely mm. harmless. Oh, oh well, there you go. Really? There we go. Thank you. Cured. Wow. Mm. You, you look, it's a good job you looked away because it was I'm really like, close. I'm worried I might faint, which <laughs> is something I've never done on television in my life. All right, you've been sending in photos of your moles for Dr Derek. So Sarah in Edinburgh sent us in this photo. It is on her back Ooh. and she's concerned. You better look away, Vanessa. Yeah. Derek. So and think, Dr. Derek's had a good look at everything first before yeah, the yeah. show. So I think it's very important that sort of whenever we're assessing any skin growth that, you know, it's all contextualised. So you need to know sort of how, you know, someone's history of sun exposure, whether they've been burnt, whether the, the growth has changed. But that particular growth course, um, you know, I'd always recommend that she goes and sees her GP. But it's scaly, it's textured. Um, it looks like something called a seborrheic keratosis, which is a sign of wisdom and maturity. And yeah. above it is a um, is a what looks like an intradermal mole, um, which is a raised mole. But in both instances, I'd recommend that she goes and see a GP for you know that extra level of reassurance, and they can assess it in person, which is all. Is there a difference between a black mole and a brown mole? Because that one was black and one was brown. Yeah, so oh. um, the one beneath it, with, which was textured, had the different pigment. So that was oh. a seborrheic keratosis. That's probably the commonest thing I see in clinic. Mm -hmm. They can have lots of um, different shapes and, and sizes and appearances. Um, they look like someone stuck them onto your back or wherever it is, mm. and they have a warty texture. Oh, stop it. Uh -huh. God, every time you describe it more, it makes me feel like I'm going to say. All right, Nikki in Devon has emailed in this photo, and this is on her cheek. She has two moles on her cheek. Oh, wow. Yeah. Gosh, if she came to you as a patient, doctor, what do you think you would do? 
So I, I think I'd, I'd want to obviously assess the mole in a bit more detail. The picture's a little bit blurred, mm -hmm. particularly the, the one with the pigmentation on the inner, on the inner cheek. Yes. Um, so I'd want to sort of just make sure that that pigment is, I mean, looking at it, they're both symmetrical. Yes. And as I said, the most important thing with these things is the context. So, okay, so imagine yeah. if Nikki came to you and, she, yeah. and you said, I think they're fine, they're symmetrical, I'm yeah. not worried about them. And then Nikki said, I would like you to remove them. Yeah. Let's imagine she said that. Yeah. Would you say yes and would you do it or not? Well, it depends on the reason why we're removing them. So if we're concerned about it, then we'd take a different approach as to if we want to remove it for cosmetic reasons. No, for cosmetic reasons. So for cosmetic reasons, we'd do something called a shave biopsy, which involves us numbing the area and scraping the raised part off the skin and cauterizing the base. So it can leave a very good cosmetic outcome. Um, there'll be a little bit of a mark where the mole was, but that will improve with time. All right, thank you very much. Now, Paula in Greater Manchester has sent in this picture. This mole is also on her face. So by the corner of her nose, yeah. what would you think about that one? Yeah, as I said, with all moles, um, you know, context is important, but it looks very symmetrical um, and it has um, almost sort of a, a, a warty appearance to it. And it looks like what we call a intradermal mole. But again, I'd always recommend that Paula goes and see her GP for a more sort of... I'm um, just asking, if you did go to see your GP, if you managed to get an appointment, which is a big deal in the first place, but let's say you did, are GPs experts enough at looking at moles and assessing, or do you really need to go to a consultant dermatologist at your hospital? Will a GP know what they're looking for? Well, GPs are skilled enough to know if a mole needs further assessment by a dermatologist. Uh, you're right, sort of GPs have varying levels of dermatology experience, but usually they'll have an instinct as to whether or not it needs further assessment. Right. Uh, Vanessa is in East Yorkshire and sent in a WhatsApp of what we think is a mole on her ear. OK. Ah, oh, what yeah. do you think of that? Mm. So, um, again, I, I would need to assess it in a bit more detail with my dermatoscope and get a bit more of a history. Um, but, you know, it looks like something called a compound mole, which is a mole with a raised bit and a um, flat bit. Mm. Um, again, sort of, I'd always assess, uh, I'd always recommend seeing your GP. Um, but moles can, or harmless moles, can also increase in size. Um, so, you know, not, any, not every change in mole is a mole of concern. But certainly if a mole is changing, you should get it checked. OK. Mm. We've got a caller, actually. Delia's on the line in London. Delia, you want advice about not getting skin cancer. What would you like to ask the doctor? Um, I'm allergic to what they call pegs, so it's any kind of polymers, any kind of plastic, and it seems that every, they're in everything lately, and it's so difficult for me to find a product. I've used so many different products. I've got a topic eczema. All right, and yeah, we've, we've, we've got to go to the doctor because we're running out of time on this. So she's allergic to everything. What kind of a thing could she use as a uh, could Delia use as a sunscreen? Um, so I'd recommend that um, you know. Any product, I mean, go for products which are formulated for sensitive skin because they've sort of taken that into account mm. and perform a test patch. So try on an area of skin that, um, you know, doesn't have any eczema or any sort of rash and make sure that you don't react to it. And if you wanted further inf uh, information, then it would be best to see a consultant dermatologist. And there are some dermatologists who specialize in what we call cutaneous allergy. And so they'll be able to, they'll be best placed to advise you on which products and which, um, you know, additives um, are safe for you to use. All right, exactly. thank you, Doctor, very much indeed. Well, you certainly got through plenty of those and <laughs> somehow managed not to faint, which I think was some kind of achievement. Mike's going to be all right, thank God for that. <laughs>